Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, where the time zone you are. Um, Mario and I are going to do a presentation today on Kubernetes with Tecton and GitOps. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to our first slide. So as I said, um, I'm Ryan Cook, um, and this is an amazing engineer, uh, Mario Vasquez, with me. And what we're going to do is we're going to present and talk about a product, actually two products today, that have been just completely influential in the last year, year and a half of our work. Um, we've been incredibly passionate about both these products, and so we're happy to share what we've learned thus far with them. So why don't we just get straight into it? So let's start off by talking about what GitOps is. I know that it's been becoming a really popular term. We've seen a lot about it uh, on Twitter, within the community. GitOps is actually just storing your YAML Kubernetes objects within your Git repository, thus the Git version, portion of this. And then the operations part of it is, is the best way to describe it is that the ops part of it is running kubeapply-f of your Git objects over and over and over again. So think of GitOps and implementing it with your environment as having an extra admin whose sole job it is, is to just stare at your repository and apply objects as they come in or as they change. Um, a lot of these GitOps tools and the one we'll be covering today have templating options with the help of Helm and Customize. And you just have to kind of fit the tool versus Helm or Customize of how you want to use it. The best part about GitOps and all of these tools are that there is no object limit creations. So you can install a third party tool such as Crossplane or um, you know, some of the other plugins from the cloud providers store those in Git and the GitOps tool will apply it. And then lastly, there's remediation of your environment through webhooks, or sometimes there's actually just a controller running within the environment, just checking on your repository. But with this, there comes some best practices. Um, as with everything that we do, least privileges as possible. You don't wanna give a GitOps tool, just kind of cluster admin access to everything because you know, things go awry. If you don't have a testing framework set up, you might remove a very important namespace. So just identifying the privileges that are important to your environment and what you want to apply. And then store code and Kubernetes objects in different repositories. This one's kind of back and forth. We've had really good success with storing them separately just because of the fact that one might move faster than the other one. Um, depending on the GitOps tool that you use, you might have webhooks. And if you're committing a readme update, you don't actually just want to push out a new build or at least evaluate if there's a new build. Um, there's also set up proper RBAC access for your Git repositories. Um, and then avoid storing regular secrets within your Git repository. The reason why I say that is regular secrets are base64. You run base64-d and that's no longer a secret. So Mario will actually show today in the demonstration how to use sealed secrets. And then, with always, uh, documentation is huge. Um, definitely document the process and to recreate your GitOps tool and artifacts and just document the whole process because you don't want to be trying to figure out how to do this at 3 in the morning. So there's a couple of different deployment models when we're looking at GitOps. Um, and there's different tools that use the different, different methodologies. There's some tools that can handle both. Um, for example, we'll talk about the hub and spoke. What this is, is a GitOps tool that sits on a cluster. We'll call this one that sits in your main office. And then from there, it interacts with all of your different Kubernetes clusters out in the world, all over the place but they don't have any sort of tooling on them that keeps them in sync. It is all handled straight from that in-office Kubernetes cluster. On the other side of that, you, there is a cluster independent mode. And this one's a little bit different because it only cares about itself. So all of those independent clusters all over the world in the cloud, they have their own GitOps tool running and they're calling back to Git themselves. This is kind of nice because it doesn't require a connection between your office to that cloud provider or that distributed data center. But it's kind of harder to manage because they're all of these individual um, 
GitOps tools and clusters and so on. So you really just have to kind of pick the tool that really fits your organization and your scale. So the, the tool that we've just been kind of almost in love with for the last year has been Argo CD. The reason why we've kind of chose this one is the fact that it can operate in a hub and spoke model and it can operate in a cluster independent module. So it has like that both kind of feel to it. Um, there's templating with customized and Helm. Um, we absolutely love customized because it's so easy, especially we do a ton of work in multi-cluster. So customize and the GitOps tool are just like our best friends. Uh, Argo CD also brings in the idea of pruning, which a lot of GitOps tools are really scared of. Um, when I say it does pruning, think of, think of a situation where you apply something manually to your cluster and it's not in Git at all and it's just there. Um, what Argo CD will do is it will actually remediate that and remove that manually created item from your cluster. So if you're security minded, this is awesome. This is a security administrator as well as your GitOps tool handling stuff for you. This, this GitOps tool is security and uh, deployment. And as I said earlier, it does multi-cluster configurations, which is massive for the work that we do. So as I was saying a minute ago, we love Customize. Um, Customize was actually the tool itself, the tooling and the ability to use it was integrated into Kubernetes 1.14. So if you run kubeapply-k, it's going to attempt to customize your directory. Um, all Customize really does is it allows you to provide overrides of specific entries. For example, if one location should have more replicas of a pod than another, it's just, it's really cool and really simplistic and it makes your, your code kind of minimalized. And um, it's super powerful when we talk about multi-cluster. So now we're gonna completely switch gears and go to Tekton. Um, with GitOps and our Argo CD tool, that was applying resources to our environments and keeping them in check. Tekton is gonna be actually our CI CD tool. And it's the ability to, when I say that CI CD tool, it's gonna to create our artifacts for environment. It can create images, it can create uh, pull requests of our different deployment of the image that we just created. Um, it runs serverless. So when I say that, that means there is no pod sitting there waiting for work to happen. You actually launch against the uh, Tekton endpoint and then a pod is created and then goes away when it's done. So it's different than previous generations where we have our Jenkins server that just hangs out and waits for work to be done. This only executes when called upon. Um, it enables pipeline and workflow functionality. That is something that Argo can't do today. Argo will look at a directory and it's just gonna apply everything in no specific order. Um, a demonstration, which I'll show here in a moment, shows why order is sometimes important. And then the last piece I'm gonna cover, it's pluggable. When I say that it's pluggable, you could take the same set of tasks that your developers and your users and your administrators develop, and then you actually just hand it out to everybody. Um, so the cool thing is it creates a really a sharing environment. Uh, you can reuse these tasks over and over in different pipelines or in different groups within your organization. And so the next step is I'm actually gonna break down some of this terminology. I know that I just said pipeline. So they have these individual, um, I guess processes is the best way to put it. A task is the simplest process. Uh, a pipeline is a series of tasks and you see this event list in our trigger binding and trigger template. And that allows you to create a webhook that will execute this pipeline in these tasks. So to kind of break this a little bit easier for us to understand, let me show you an example of a pipeline that I have to use regularly. So as you see when I'm sharing my screen here, I have to do like a ton of multi-cluster work and I make mistakes frequently. Um, so what I did was I have this pipeline that creates clusters, sleeps, and then peers the two newly created clusters together. So I have highlighted here this create task. So let's actually break down what this actually looks like. So this create cl uh, cluster task, all that it really actually is, 
is running a kubectl create command. And what it's doing is it's checking my Git repository and then applying whatever's in that Git repository. So where does the Git repository actually come from? And that is actually where that task run comes in. Your task run tells the task what the answers are to the variables that it needs. So as you can see, I have my Git repository here and my path to my YAML file in which that create cluster uh, task actually has to run. The really cool thing is going back to this task here, actually I'm able to use it more than one time. So you're seeing it here, going to my pipeline, you're gonna see this create cluster one and create cluster two. That's the strength of pipelines because I have multiple tasks going in a specific order. And then at the end of it, I, I end up with two clusters that are Amazon peered together and allow me to develop and start working immediately. So looking at our pipeline, it's very similar to tasks. It's just a little bit more dense. Um, we have a couple parameters that we require to run our pipeline. And those are actually answered with an our pipeline run. Um, as you see here, here's my answers. I'd like cluster one and cluster two, uh, as you see here. And then it references our create cluster pipeline. So as you see, they all kind of tie back together. And then the last item that I'm gonna cover is the, what they call a trigger template. It looks very similar to pipelines. As you can see here, same variables, we have a pipeline resource and we have our pipeline run. And what this trigger template and below, as you see here, trigger binding and event list journal, this actually creates a web hook. And what you can do with this web hook is you can give this to GitHub, GitLab, and then anytime your code is committed, it's gonna kick off a new build for you. So Mario is actually gonna show that later on with a really fun demo um, with some CI/CD testing. So going back to our slides, you're actually gonna probably ask me right now, why are you using Argo and Tekton? And the easiest way and kind of why I showed that demonstration a minute ago is the fact that I need my clusters actually created before I can actually peer them. And that's one of the things Argo CD would actually create my clusters for me and do an amazing job of it. But it would never know when they were actually available to the point where I could actually peer them. So they kind of go hand in hand together and create a very, very strong team. Um, and they utilize each other's strengths. Uh, Tekton is perfect at handling your image lifecycle. Argo CD doesn't really have any idea of that. So when I say your image lifecycle, Tekton is going to build your container image. It's going to put all the assets and then it's going to push it to your repository. You can add testing within Tekton, uh, your Tekton tasks and your pipeline. And then the really fun thing where we tie this all back together with Argo and what I was saying earlier, you can have all of your tasks sitting in one Git repository and then you just provide the namespace and Argo is going to share out any tasks that your team comes up with to the different namespaces, to those different developer groups so that we're not recreating the same work over and over again. So it, it's such a good team together. Um, one handles the YAML objects, other creates, handles the workflows and asset creation. So I'm actually gonna cover a couple of uh, helpful binaries that um, you would actually use uh, when it comes to these scenarios. You'll see there's an Argo CD binary. All this actually does is it allows you to interact with Argo CD, not using the web UI. Um, there's also the TKN binary. Same exact story. Uh, it allows you to interact with Tekton without having to actually go and modify the YAML or running kubectl logs and trying to figure out what this job's actually going on or what's, what's happening to it. And then last, um, how I mentioned earlier with kubeseal. Kubeseal will allow us to create sealed secrets, which we can actually store within our, excuse me, uh, within our Git repository. And these sealed secrets are only able to be unlocked unless you have the, the required certificates. And so um, with that being said, let's actually see a demonstration of all of these pieces together with Argo CD, uh, Tekton. Um, as you can see here, this is kind of the demo architecture. We're gonna store our YAML files within Git. And then uh, 
Argo CD is going to actually populate our stage and production namespaces with the assets created uh, by Tecton. And with that, I'm going to pass over to Mario. Okay, thank you, Ryan. All right, so let me explain uh, the demo that we are going to do today a bit. So basically, we have a, a really simple Golang application um, that we want to every time a new commit hits the master branch of our application repository, we want a, a pipeline to be run, which will lint our code, then it will test our code, and finally, it will build our code. And when all of that happens, if everything goes okay, then we will create a new container image that will be pushed to a container registry. In this case, we're using Quay. And on top of that, we will update the the deployment files, and then we will uh, be able to deploy the new release automatically to the staging environment. And then for the production environment, we will see a different pipeline, which will um, basically promote the stage image to the production uh, environment. And that will generate a PR. And when that PR is reviewed and merged, then the application will be uh, deployed to the production environment. In this case, as Ryan said, uh, we are using namespaces as environments, but this could be done using different clusters, and every cluster will be a different environment. Uh, Argo CD, as you know, uh, supports multi-cluster, so you could do that as well. And without further ado, let me uh, share my screen really quick. All right. So this is that you are seeing now is the Argo CD web UI, but let's just start explaining the different repositories that we have. So the first one, as I said, it's uh, the application repository. Here we have a really simple Golang application. We have the Docker file, which instructs how to build the image using the binaries. We have the test, the test file, uh, files, and it's just a single rant. Um, that's pretty much it. And then we have the CI/CD repository. In this CI/CD repository, we have multiple branches. So the first one that I'm going to show is the CI. Here's where where we store every single um, CI file that we use for Tecton. It's taking a bit to load. You see. All right. I cannot reach the... Okay, anyway, so we have different branches. So we have the CI branch, which has the Tecton files that we are going to use in our pipelines. Then we have the a config branch, which will store the different files used by used to deploy our application to multiple environments. Um, I really need this to, to load in order to explain it well. Maybe I can... Go to GitHub if this is not working. Hmm. Okay, never mind. Um, let me change to a different repository really quick. Okay, so basically this is the same repo which is public on GitHub. So as I said, uh, we have the config branch where we have the files that are common to all our environments. So for example, here we have a deployment. This is a really simple Kubernetes deployment. We have an image and then we have a release environment variable, which we can set to different values. In this case, it's set to base release. And then we have the service and the customization file. The customization file, in this case, for the ones that know about customize, uh, it's really simple. We just we are just saying that we are we have two resources here: the deployment file and the service file. And then we have the different branches for our environments. We have, for example, production. And in this range, um, we have different files. This file, those are the files that differ from our config configuration or base configuration. Sorry. So. If we look at the deployment, you can see that we are just uh, using a different image and then we are setting the release variable to a different uh, value, in this case, production release. 
So that's that's okay. Other than that, um, here here in the customization file, we are seeing that our base files are present on this same Git repository on the config branch. And then we have other resources that are specific to this environment, which are the namespace and the ingress. And then we are patching the deployment file. So if we look at the namespace, for example, here, we can see that we are using a reverse rules production name for our namespace. And for example, if we go to the states uh, branch, we will see that we are um, using this uh, name for the states. So that's uh, what we have in the GitLab repository. And now I'm going to explain the, the different pipelines with a more detailed diagram. So first, our developers will send code changes to, um, to GitLab. And, and then uh, when that happens, that will actually uh, trigger a webhook. The webhook will instruct Tekton to run a pipeline. The pipeline uh, will lean test and then build our code, create a new image. We'll push the new image to the Red Hat IO registry. Then the pipeline will go ahead and update the CICD repository and in the stage branch, the deployment file will be modified. So now it uses the new release that was created on Quay.io, the new image. After that happens, that change on the CICD repository will trigger another webhook that will instruct, will instruct um, Argo CD to actually, actually go ahead and deploy the application to the state's namespace. That way, uh, once a commit hits the master branch on our application repository, we will get the, that code uh, deployed automatically without uh, human, human intervention. And then uh, when we have tested the code on the staging environment and we are ready to move it to production, there's a different pipeline. In this case, the developers or the sysadmins, wh whoever wants to needs to um, run a pipeline manually, will need to introduce some data and that will actually generate a pipeline run that will go ahead and open a pull request against our CICD repository on the production branch. And then that PR will be reviewed by some of some people or maybe the, the environment admins or whatever. And once, once this PR, once that PR is merged, then Argo CD, that will trigger a webhook and Argo CD will go ahead and create the production uh, and deploy the production application. So uh, let me go to Argo CD really quick. So now we don't have anything loaded in Argo CD. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add the CI CD repository. So GitOps is all about Git. So we need our Git repository loaded into GitLab. So I'm, I'm saying this is my Git repository. I don't need any username or password for, in order to clone it. So I will go ahead, click connect. And that, uh, so that our Git repository to, let me see. Oop. All right. So I, I don't know if something is happening with the with the GitLab server, but it's not working for me. Let me try, uh, let's try using the, the CLI. Let's see if we have more. Okay. So it seems I cannot, I cannot reach the the Argo CD, the GitLab server from my computer or from the server. So I need to, so our GitLab is down. So I'm going to try to perform the same demo using GitHub. I'm not sure if everything will work. I will try to make it work. So as I, say, as I, as I said, I'm going to use this repository here. Um, in this case, it will be GitHub. Um, 
then oh sorry okay let's connect to github this is connected and now i'm going to go ahead and create the staging application um let me create the application really quick so i'm going to name it um uh, reverse worst stage then the project will be used so uh, Argo CD has different projects you can like have projects to store your different applications like if it was an image space kind of thing um, sorry I'm working on the web UI now so, and and yes basically we are uh, creating the application under default now the sync policy I'm setting it to automatic to automat automatic what that means is that um, Argo CD will uh, will query the Git repository every three minutes by default, and will try to see if any change is needed for our application. And then we have here the prun, prun, prun resources that Ryan explained before what pruning is. We are not going to activate this. And then self healing, it's kind of the opposite of prun, of pruning, I would say. So in case there is something in Git that is not in the Kubernetes cluster because someone someone deleted it or something, uh, Argo CD will go ahead and create that for us again. Then we want to validate the resources uh, against the schema. Then we have the the repository URL, which is the reverse words CI CD repository. As we are creating the stage application, we are going to to use the stage revision and our deployment files are in the root folder for that repository so we don't have any folders uh, when you're using GitOps there are multiple ways of uh, storing your artifacts let's say inside the Git repository you can go with folders or you can go with branches um, this is not a standard so you can do it the way that fits best for you then as a destination we are using the cluster where Argo CD is running if we had more clusters added to this Argo CD uh, instance, we could basically choose different clusters here. That's the way that you do multi-cluster with um, Argo CD. And then the namespace uh, that we are deploying is reverse words states. Um, the customize it's okay. Let me try to verify if GitLab is working. Okay, uh, no luck. Let's try, this will some things will fail. Uh, we will try to see what fails and why. So basically, Argo CD now went ahead and created the different um, the different objects. Here we can see the deploy, um, the deployment, the service, the ingress that won't work because it's using a different um, it's using a different domain that it's not properly set up at this point. Um, then we have the pod and let me let me try to, I'm not sure if we will have time for doing this, but I want to basically that to work. So let's go to a stage in the ingress. Let's edit the ingress, oops. All right, I'm going to do it from the CLI. Or maybe maybe we can we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and continue with without that working. Okay, I will do that. Um, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a new application for production, but in this case. Um, I'm, I'm going to use the Argo CD CLI. So this will be the command, Argo CD create project, then the project, same par parameters. But in this case, I need to change the, I need to change the, the repository because this one is not, it's not working because it's down. So let me do that really quick. Okay, so now the production application is created. So we should see the production application coming up here. Same as before, 
uh, the ingress will be wrong because it's pointing to to a different um, server basically. So that uh, will not work. Um, but now, uh, what what we wanted to show was the the webhook, and I'm afraid that I'm not going to. I'm not. Be, I won't be able to show that on on GitLab. So I'm going to show it on GitHub, which is kind of the same. But we we won't be able to run the automatic webhook. So I will need to run the pipeline manually. But anyway, um, I need to log in really quick. Let me do that. Okay, let me put my authenticator code. All right. Okay, so if, if I go to settings, um, here you can see that we have the webhooks thing. So in GitLab, what I would I would do is basically come here and uh, for, this is for the deployment repository. I will configure a webhook that says that whenever is there is a push to the to, the, to any branch, uh, it needs to send a webhook to this URL. This URL um, it's basically a Argo CD endpoint, and Argo CD it's smart enough to understand which application it needs to update because. Um, when you create an application, you define a Git repository and then the, you define a branch for that application. So it will read the Git repository and then it will read the branch and will update the application that is configured with this repository and this branch. And now that I'm blogging, uh, let me see if I can, if I can fix the, well, the URL for the application. In that way, we could see, um, the different versions being deployed. So this is not like that. This will be a different, well, it, it won't work anyway, so I'm not going to do that. We will see it using the CLI. Okay, and then for the reverse application, so for the other repository, which is the one for the application, it will be the same. So basically a webhook that um, will connect to the Tecton events endpoint that we have published on our uh, cluster, and that will be um, captured by Tecton and will run the pipeline as we as we want. So now let's see if I can basically force a pipeline run using the Tecton CLI. So. We have here uh, the TKN uh, CLI. So now uh, we are using the reverse worst tecton namespace. And we want, uh, one sec, I'm going to copy paste this. So actually we have the web UI for the for Tecton, let me show that really quick. So here we have the Tecton dashboard where we can see where we we can see the different uh, pipelines that we have, and I think that uh, well we can run the pipeline from here. So let me create a pipeline run. So basically here we have the reverse the, the namespace where we are running the pipeline, the name of the pipeline that we will run. Then we need to provide some resources. So the 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 repository for getting the code. Um, I need to change that really quick because it's pointing to, it's pointing to, um, to the GitLab instance that it's down. Okay, let me do that really quick. I'm on the terminal now. Um, this is in the build pipeline. Um, so, keep CTL. Oh, 
wait one sec let's see if i can do it from the web drive it will be um okay it will be easier for you and for me okay so we have the cicd repository here uh let's update this yaml i don't know if we can update this yaml here okay we can't okay, back to the terminal all right um oh sorry that was wrong so now we have the pipeline resources i'm going to edit uh, these two resources here so basically the cicd repository and the and the other repository for the application okay i want the ssl verify and then i'm going to do the same for the base git repository here we don't need this and then we have i think that's pretty much it what we need and now i'm going to i'm going back to the to the web ui so we can um, go ahead and, and run the pipeline so you can see it um so reverse build pipeline reverse word uh, we are using the application git repository here we need to use the this image which is the quay io image we will use um, a different tag for example since we are running this uh, manually, we will, need, we will need to provide a tag. If this was run using the webhook, what will happen is that the, the commit ID from the Git repository for the application will be used as image tag. So that way you have the latest uh, commit ID as your image tag. You can see which, you can know which changes were introduced by that image by looking at the commit ID. Okay, and then uh, we need to use uh, this service account which has privileges to pu push the image to Quay, and that should be it. Let's see. So uh, we need to wait a bit because we need um, to wait the pods to start. In the meantime, I'm going to check if GitLab is up again, but it seems it's, it's down. OK. So basically what this is doing, if I go to a terminal, um, you will be able to see that we have some pods. Okay. So this is a pip the pipeline run. And the, po the, the pipeline is running at the moment. Me, quick. Okay, so now the the application code is being downloaded, and we will basically link the code. After that, uh, we will go ahead and test and run the test. And when that uh, when that is done, we will basically go ahead and create a new uh, image and publish it to the Quay IO repository. And then the last step will fail because it the last step uh, will be connecting to the Git repository and update the deployment file. And since the GitLab instance that we are using for demo is down, we won't be able to show that. So I'm sorry. Maybe we can share a video with you after, th after that. All right. So the linting is complete. Now the next step will be testing the code. So the pod is still waiting to start. Okay, now it's running. Same thing. So it will basically run our tests that are defined in our application repository. And in case uh, all the te all the tests are okay, then it will continue and will generate the image. 
this will take a bit because it's the first time that we run the pipeline in this cluster, but the next runs will be uh, faster since we will have uh, most of the container images available locally. Okay. So I'm going to show you what will happen in the Git repository. So in this repository here, in the CI CD repository, the pipeline will go ahead and in the stage runs will basically update this file and here this will be changed by the tag that the pipeline has defined. In this case, we define the OSS20 tag, so we, we will need to update this to that tag when the pipeline ends. So let's wait for that to happen. And when that happen, uh, happens, we will, uh, I will manually update the, the file. So we will see um, the application being, being updated. So now, while this is running, oh, sorry, I was in the terminal for this whole time, and and this was happening on the Argo CD, sorry, in the Tecton dashboard. So basically, the linting and the testing uh, is complete, and now we are building the image here, and next step will be pushing the image. And as I said, what will happen is that uh, when the pipeline finishes, um, this file in the GitLab repository would be updated. Uh, so this tag will be set to OSS20 instead of this commit ID here. So I was saying that let's wait for that to happen and then I will update the file and we should see the application being updated. You can see here the tag <coughs> that we define, OS 2020, OS20, sorry. And then this stage uh, will likely, fa likely fail because we don't have connectivity with the Git server. So um, I'm going to basically update the file manually. So here, let's go ahead and use OS20. So you, this is the the tag that we use it for the pipeline to run. Okay. So now, as soon as I change this, or if that was changed by the pipeline, Argo CD will receive a webhook that will trigger an application deployment. This is not going to happen because um, this repository is not configured to uh, use this Argo CD webhook. So what I'm going to do is basically run the sync, which is what will happen when the webhook uh, is triggered. So basically we want to synchronize and this should see that the repository is out of sync because the deployment file was updated. So now we can see how the Argo CD went ahead and updated the deployment um, object and that generated a new pod, which uh, if we go to the terminal now, um, here, we can see that new pod deployed here. And if we look at the image, we can see that it's running the OS20 image. And then if we look um, at production, We can see here that we are using a different image. Um, sorry, I missed the pot. Okay, 
So next step will be uh, running the the promote uh, the promotion pipeline. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to show you the the command that we will use for running this using the the TKM uh, CLI. So we will need to introduce the namespace where our pipeline is defined. Then we will start the pipeline. This is the pipeline that we want to start. Um, the resource that we're using as application Git is the CI/CD repository. So this is a repository where, where the pull request will be created to update our deployment file. This is the file that we are updating. In this case, is the deployment YAML. Um, this is the uh, stage branch. So where are we going to get the release that is deployed on the stage environment? In our case, is a stage branch inside the reverse world CI/CD repository. And then here we have the another parameter, which is the uh, stage application URL, which can be used uh, in order to run tests against our applications. In this pipeline, it was a really damp test that was accessing the the application using a curl command. And then uh, the pipeline will basically go ahead and create the pull request. So instead of creating the pull request, which won't work um, because Git is down, I will go ahead um, go back to Firefox. Then I want to get this tag here. I want to go to production. And again, this is not how you do GitOps at all. So sorry about that. Um, you will That will be a pull request, then some reviewers. I uh, should take care of reviewing that pull request, make sure that everything is okay. Different companies will have different uh, workflows or different teams will have different workflows as well. So, but in the end, when the change uh, reaches the production branch, and uh, that will uh, trigger the Argo CD, um, the Argo CD webhook, and now the production, as you can see, it fired the it fired the update automatically because basically uh, every three minutes Argo CD will basically go to the Git repository and see if anything changed. In this case, the deployment changed, so. I, I, I didn't need to hit sync here. It's automatic. So you have that two, two ways of working. You can just uh, wait for Argo CD to go and get the changes, or you can, uh, using a, a webhook, you can, as soon as the uh, file is updated, get the application deployed. And now, if we look at the, well, that would, won't work. So we're not wasting time looking at the output. Um, here we will see a different pod now. Um, sorry. So this pod will be using um, the products, the image that was tested on a staging. So that's the way that you can basically go from the code to a stage and last step to production. And now I want to so that will be the demo that shows how you get to production your code. And then uh, and now I want to introduce you to sealed secrets. As Ryan said, uh, up uploading secrets to Git is not a good idea. So basically, I'm going to show this really quick. So kubeseal, you need to deploy a a controller which basically uses PKI, PKI for encrypting your secrets. And then um, I'm going to create a, a dump secret here. So you can see this is a regular Kubernetes secret. Uh, we're almost out of time, so I'm going really fast. Um, this secret, as you can see here, um, you can decode it using base64, that's the, as Ryan said, it is not secure at all. So you you can you shouldn't upload this file to Git, but instead you can use uh, sealed secrets. So basically here, the kubeseal uh, command will read your Kubernetes credentials and will connect to the, uh, will use the kubeseal controller to, 
to encrypt your secret. So we are saying, okay, I want to seal this secret. That is the secret that we just created before. And I want you to output the sealed secret in this file. Okay, so now this is a sealed secret. As you can see, we have the same data, but this is a new, this is a CRD, which has the encrypted data instead of data. And here we have the password, for example. If we try, if we try to decode this as we did before, this will fail, this is a binary, binary output because this file is actually encrypted. So now you could go ahead, upload this file to Git and it's safe. Then Argo CD or the application that you, that you use for deploying uh, will basically create the sealed secret. And once the sealed secret is created in the cluster, for example, if I go ahead and I create this secret here, um, the sealed secret, Okay, now I should see, um, after a while, I should see the, well, after a while, no, it should be in this repository, in this namespace. I should see the test secret, which now it will be usable by Kubernetes. So you can see here that we have the password that we had before. In this case, uh, you can go ahead and, oh, sorry, I was doing all of this in the terminal. I'm so sorry. Um, you can go ahead and decrypt the, the secret. But the sealed secret, as you can see here, um, you cannot decode that. So if you try to do that, you will get a binary output, as you can see here. So that's the file that you should upload to, to Git. And when you create that file into, into Kubernetes using Argo CD, um, you will get the secret decoded. Uh, so you will get an encrypted secret, and you could use that in your applications. And that's, that's it, all I had. Um, we will uh, answer the questions after the talk and we are available on the Slack channel. Um, the demo, the working demo, it's it's available in the GitHub repository um, that you will have on the SCED um, website. You can go there. There are the, you have the slides there and at the end of the slides you have the git you have the link to the demo. So you can basically create an environment using any Kubernetes uh, cluster you so any Kubernetes distribution you use and run the demo by yourself. And thank you very much for attending the session. Not sure if you all can still hear us, but um, thank you all for attending. Um, we really appreciate your time today. Uh, Mario, thank you as well for creating a demo on the fly. So um, really cool stuff. I hope we answered a lot of your questions. Uh, like Mario said, we'll be in the Slack after the call. Um, and elsewhere, if you can reach us, if you need to reach us, uh, we're also on Twitter, so feel free to uh, connect and ask us any questions uh, you guys might see fit. <laughs>